So we're just going to keep going through and sewing up. Like that. But get stuff out of there so you can see how that just sits in there. There's there's the knot and there's there's the fruit suture. And this is a continuous, it's called. What that means is it's just instead of individual knots, it's one continuous suture and knot. And sometimes stuff gets tangled up on stuff and you gotta get it out of there and then you pull through. So you can see that's seating nice. Notice I'm not pulling too tight because again, we want it to heal. We don't want to pinch the blood vessels off, the blood supply off. So here we go. See how nice that holds together and then this will be the last suture. So, so now I'm going to tie a knot in it, just like I did for the other sutures, and I don't know, make it too tight. Okay, so that's that's one of the real that's the muscle, and there's the knot. So you notice the incision's gotten a little smaller. Now we're going to use the most important stitch veterinarians put in. It's under the skin. Grab the needle and we grab the side of the skin and we put it up against the skin and it comes out. And on the other side we go the opposite direction. It goes down. See? And then it pulls the skin together. See how it does that? Get this spare suture out of there. And then we tie a knot and the knot gets pulled into the incision because of the direction I put the needle. So it doesn't want to stick out the top. We don't want it to stick out the top. Now I'm going to make a continuous again, so I'm only going to cut one side. And we're going to keep on going. Just sew the skin all together like that. So the needles pointed up. And I, instead of going through the skin like that, I go inside. And then down on the other side. See how it goes, all goes together? Now this stitch will dissolve in a few weeks. Uh, and then if, it, if, the, if this sub-Q incision looks good, or sub-Q sutures look good, then the incision, I might not even put any skin sutures in, but I might put a few just to show you what the difference is. But normally I would just put a little tissue glue so see how that's going up one side and then we pull, pull it out with the tweezers and we put going down and see how that just closes it up so nice and so pretty. So this is the last one so I'm going to put a little deeper because we don't want the knot sticking out. So it goes deep like that. And then it goes through the other side again, same thing. Had to save that because I didn't want to let that disappear. That's the knot I have to tie. 
in. This is, we're gonna put some skin sutures in. And here's, so I, put, I would put the skin straight through, straight through the other side, just like when you're sewing. And that's the difference between sub Q and skin. Now, usually these sutures have to come out because they, they will dissolve slowly like the other, but they will stand there, stay there. So we'll usually just take them out in a, two weeks after the skin's after it's healed nicely. So we'll put three in here just to show you. So there's, that was one, two, and three. When the suture gets small, it gets hard to tie it. Okay. Well, I hope the dog that was whining wasn't too annoying. Don't worry, it was just waking up. It wasn't being tortured. Sometimes dogs just have a little anxiety or are a little scared when they wake up. We try to soothe them, but some are more scared than others and will whine. We finally moved her into a night better cage where, where she could see other dogs and then she was better. Um, when we spay, well, we spay females, like I said, because it decreases their risk of breast cancer, decreases the risk of them uh, having an unwanted pregnancy and perhaps being bred by a big dog and needing a c-section uh, to get the puppies out um, that way we can make sure and they make better pets they don't uh, bleed all over the house and they don't attract a bunch of guys that those humpy male dogs that come over and want to hump everything they're annoying and uh, females can attract a bunch of males and make life a kind of a nightmare there's kind of there's a research and you can go on my Facebook page, Dr. Greg DVM, our Dog Dish Diet Facebook, um, that says that dogs are spayed too young, the two month age like they used to be spayed in shelters, um, don't get the help from their hormones like their estrogen and testosterone to have good growth of their muscles and ligaments, and also there's a slight uh, increase in bone cancer. So I'm starting to advise my clients to spay their young animals at a little older, at least six months or more. And probably would be better at a year, but by then they've come in heat and sometimes it's they're, they're really big and it, it's, a, it's a more painful procedure. So there's that balance in the years to come. We'll try to figure out what the best time is to neuter. And if dogs, some dogs are better left at, intact, especially if they're going to be working dogs or uh, show dogs, field trial dogs, stuff like that. So do your research um, if you're going to get your animals neutered and make sure it's something you want to do early or if you want to wait a little bit time. If a dog's really aggressive, it's always better to neuter them a little earlier. Hey, and if you uh, have a dog that is itchy skin or ear problems or seizures what if you wanted to feed raw diet and you you're afraid of the raw diet because it has bacteria in it you're thinking maybe you should uh, feed a diet with less preservatives chemicals less grains well I wrote a book that you can slow cook for your dog and even your cat and uh, it's very easy and it's economical and it doesn't take long. It's perfect for people that don't have much time. I use a crock pot. And you can check out a dog dish diet. The name of the book is Feed Your Pet to Avoid the Bet. So uh, that's the name of the book and uh, the ebook. Um, and you can check it out on my website, Dog Dish Diet. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.